So I've decided to remake the body of this microscope because in the many operations involved in trying to rescue um, what had essentially become a bad job, uh, I, the inaccuracies that would slowly creep in would render the the, uh, the precision of the instrument suspect. Now there's no point having a tool like this if you never really trust uh, its capabilities because you know, you know, bad aspects of it that may not be able to be accounted for uh, in use. Uh, so I'd take, I've gone to great lengths to re-chuck this part in, uh, in the forge or chuck initially so that I could recapture these threads and tidy up these threads and also to try and bore down very lightly, just uh, skim the surface of this bore because it had been uh, galled up with lots of um, uh, aluminium from the heating and also uh, Loctite in this region here, very very strong Loctite. So in doing that I was able to clock this area of the bore very very accurately in the in the forge or chuck down to you know a couple of microns total run out. But in the various operations that followed Inevitably, something moves, something gives way ever so slightly. You know, the packing pieces might shift or whatever it was. And by the time it came to to bore the full length of the of the of the inside of this block, you can see from this angle, perhaps, that the cutter was only contacting this part of the tube. You can see that um, in that zone, the cutter never touched at all. So see how out of truth the upshot or consequence of having the, the bore off at an angle like that is that the axis of the instrument is no longer uh, coincident with the axis of the arbor to which you attach it to the, to, the, to the machine that you're using it with. So like a milling, a milling machine, you know, you'd have an, a, a three morse taper arbor coming out of the back of this, uh, this section. Uh, actually this section, um, which the theory is that the axis of the spindle of the um, of, of the milling machine would be truly coincident with the optical axis of the of the lens. And then you'd have a 90 degree prism within here. Um, and so that um, this this axis particularly, the um, the longitudinal axis of the of the instrument would need to be truly consent um, well, a true axis. Whereas the way the the cutter was uh, was cutting it, uh, it was going off at an angle, so it was, it was taking a walk, and um, that ultimately would be unacceptable. So I've decided to start over, and I've thought very carefully about the uh, the operations required um, in order to make my work faster, easier, and more precise than the first time I did this. Um, and hopefully I can show some of those operations. The first time I did this, I, I did start with a smaller piece of, uh, of stock, admittedly. This, this ha is the piece I happen to be able to lay my hands on. And uh, so I'll be turning this down to uh, a you know, considerable amount of, of removal of stock there. I think this is two and a half inches, and I think this is one and five eighths. So the finished job is one and five eighths diameter. No, in fact, it's not. It's one and five eighths across the flats. So what does that come to? I think it's two inches. Yeah, two inches, pretty much exact. Let's just go to my precision 1.9965. So nominally two inches. So take a quarter inch of each side of the stock. Um, and I've decided to set the uh, the job up differently this time. As I say, the the, the first time round. Uh, this started out as a round piece of stock, bored this hole fairly accurately, and I think I, I put the, um, the threads in at that stage, made this um, boss as a register, also as a kind of measuring guide for milling the flats, so that the flats would be exactly um, uh, the same width across, across the flats as this uh, inscribed circle here. It was then incumbent upon me to return this to the lathe into the forge or chuck after these flats had been milled. Oriented in the lathe 
uh, across the lathe spindle, so the chuck holding it like this so that the job would rotate in that axis. And then find the center of this area here, so that I could drill and bore this hole, which is the hole for the side arm of the microscope, which really needs to be tr truly at 90 degrees to the axis of this first hole. The reason for that is that the prism I'm using is a 90 degree prism, and so any eccentric or any inaccuracies in uh, this side arm would equate to some loss of precision or some loss of accuracy in the eyepiece. And uh, depending on how far off square it was, you might not be able to correct that by adjusting the um, the four little screws that uh, that uh, locate the eye. The, the ocular lens. So anyway, the, the point is to try and get everything as close to nominal angles and sizes as possible and that way you don't need to make any corrections um, in, in use. So what I've decided to do this time round is start with a much longer piece of stock. Turn it down to a finished, uh, finished diameter out OD. Turn this register precisely and then while it's still chucked in the um, in the machine, turn this register also so that uh, both are absolutely concentric with each other because the job hasn't been removed from the from from the lathe. Bore this part out, screw cut these threads, which is an inch nominal uh, inside diameter, then part it off and turn it round, um, finish that face and then return it to the lathe so what you would have at that stage is a, 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 a cylinder, round, a round uh, workpiece. Put it in the four draw chuck at right angles to the first orientation so that uh, and I have to use parallels to span the, uh, the bore of the chuck and so I would then basically uh, turn this face flat and in so doing I'd also find a, a center mark. I'd have to take care to make sure that the, the center of this height of, across, these two, across these two faces is uh, e evenly, evenly disposed about the center line of the lathe, so basically, so that the center of this bore is equidistant from these two points. It's not absolutely imperative that it is so, but it does make life easier when setting things up later if uh, this hole is in a known position. In any event, the, the, the idea of that is that if you have a cylinder and you spin it in the lathe in that, in that axis, and there's a hole down the middle of it. Um, you, if you if you were, if you're taking care to make sure that the body of the cylinder is is uh, butted up against the, the 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 body of the chuck, then the bore down the center line of this workpiece is going to definitely be at right angles to the lathe axis, and therefore. You, no matter what you do, you're pretty much boring square. If you come in with a drill from from the side, uh, drill and, and and boring bar, it's it's going to be square to the workpiece, and it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter which orientation this workpiece takes. You're going to create first of all a flat by turning the section away, make a hole in the side, and then you already have one reference flat. So the workpiece can then be removed from the lathe, put in the milling, put in the milling machine with the reference face downwards in the uh, milling vise, and I have a very high precision milling vise, mill the, the opposite flat and then turn it through 90 degrees and again because it's a high precision milling vise I can quite safely clamp the two previously uh, machined faces, one turn, one milled, to present the next face, turn it through 180 degrees and the next face and then I will have four very good faces, the first one of which had already introduced the absolute precision we need for this face and uh, hopefully uh, this will help me maintain absolute squareness with the, uh, the optical axis of the, of the, of the body and um, avoid 
some of the difficulties in setting up the job that uh, took so much time the last time round. So I go and set up on the lathe and uh, see how we go.